Welcome everybody to the Stories Iceborne installation guide for mod version 363 and game version 1523. Now, the very first thing that you need to do is download the latest Visual C++ Redistributable. There is a link to it in the guide in the Discord under Getting Started. You'll see a, it's right at the top. I'll show it here on screen. You just scroll down slightly. It says read every part carefully and then getting started and you click this link here and we're gonna go down and we're gonna look for x64 and then you just click this install this and then restart your computer basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow your PC to read the code that allows the mod to work if you do not do this the mod will not function so make sure that you not only install x64, but you restart your computer before continuing with the mod. The next step is installing Stracker's Loader. You no longer need the Performance Booster and Plugin Extender, and if you do have it installed, you can delete it. However, we still need Stracker's Loader, and we need the current, most recent version, version 4.0. If you go to the installation guide in the Discord, it will take you to a direct link for the download page so that there's no confusion about which version of the mod that you need so that you can go ahead and click so slow download from here and download the correct version of the mod that you need to make stories work. And now I'm going to show you how to install this mod. The first step to installing Stranker's Loader is to locate your Monster Hunter World Steam folder. If you don't know where this is located, typically if you download it on your base drive or C drive, it'll be under Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then Monster Hunter World. You can tell because the Monster Hunter World EXE is here, and if you're still unsure, if you're not confident in your ability to navigate to it, you can open Steam itself, right click on the game, go to Manage, and Browse Local Files. Now that we've located Monster Hunter World on our computer, we can bring our Strackers Loader download over here and go ahead and unzip it. You can use 7-zip or something if you would like, but since this is a smaller file, we can just use the Windows feature to right-click and extract all, and it'll give us a little folder here, and it shouldn't corrupt or anything from doing this. If you want to be extra safe, you can use 7-zip, which I'll show you how to use in a minute for Stories itself. Um, and then we're going to take... Once this is extracted, you just open up this folder here, and you grab everything inside of it, and you just drag it over, and just drop it. Make sure you're not dropping it. You don't want to put it in any of these folders, so either in an empty space or over one of these files that it won't merge with down here. Try not to drop it over the exe either, because that can do some weird things. And then we're going to replace the files in the destination. And the next step is to install Stories Iceborne itself. So we're going to scroll down in the guide here. We can see main file link version 363. Go ahead and click this link. It's going to take us to a Google Drive thing where we can click download. It's going to give us a warning since it's too large to scan for viruses. And we're going to click download anyway. This is a little bit of a large file. So if you have a slow internet, it might take some time. But we'll be back when it's done. Now that Stories Iceborne has been downloaded, we need to extract the files so that we can install them. But the file size is too large to use the normal method of right-click extract all. This is either going to fail or corrupt the files so that we're not going to be able to use them to begin with. So we need to use 7-zip or something similar to 7-zip in order to extract Stories Iceborne correctly. You can see this little folder icon here. It will allow you to navigate to wherever you have Stories Iceborne download installed. And then once you're there, you can just select the zipped folder. If you have multiple things in the folder, just make sure it is the zipped version. Monster Hunter Stories Iceborne version 363 or whatever version this may be in the future. And then you click Extract. It's going to ask you where you want to extract it to. You can change this if you like. And, and also just, I guess, a quick note, because all of my stuff is in, in more complex places than just on my desktop. I highly recommend using a mod archive so that you don't have to download things again should things go wrong. 
unless things corrupt of course and then you might have to download it again anyway but usually it's going to be an extraction issue or a transfer issue so you can simply try to extract and reinstall before having to download everything again but let's go ahead we're gonna tell this to extract and it, it might take a very long time again because the file is large it's over two gigabytes now maybe over two and a half gigabytes and um, if it doesn't complete on its own it seems stuck just give it a little while to process and if it stick gets stuck at zero percent uh, with zero files remaining then you can close it otherwise just leave it be unless it's been hours and it seems genuinely frozen next we're gonna take our extracted folder of monster hunter stories iceborne open it up and you want to take these two folders both native pc and stories iceborne and once again you're gonna drag and drop them over into your monster hunter world game folder make sure not to drop it on any of these other folders don't drop it on the exe drop it either on these other files or down in an open space and then allow it to overwrite existing files uh, i'm not going to do that because i already have the mod installed and i don't want it to delete all my skins but Again, it might take a while because it is a large mod. If at any point you would like to back up your story save in case things go wrong, you can go to Stories Iceborne, Classic Users, and make a copy of this file somewhere safe, like your mod archive, like where I was showing my other things before. And anytime, if something happens, if you get soft locked because of some sort of bug, or maybe your file's just corrupted and you need to reinstall, and you don't want to lose your progress, anything like that, maybe, you know, any number of things that could have happened, you can retrieve, it'll be your rider level, so the ride, the level of your character with within the mod itself, not your uh, HR rank or anything like that. And also the levels and names of your monsties, because every monstie has its own level, each monstie is its own species, and they can each be assigned their own nickname, if you want to name them, and they'll each level independently of one another. Um, and this saves all of that information for you right there. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're unsure of your game version, it appears in the bottom right corner of the main screen whenever you load in down here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the setup features for the mod and just other vital things to help you get more familiar with the monsty menu in game. Okay, so we have our Monsty here. They appear in the hub in Astera and Celiana, and they can also appear in your Celiana room. And we're gonna open the Monsty menu here. It is on the third tab, Info. Down at the bottom. Check Stables just lets you know what Monsties that you have selected. So. If I've swapped Toby out. He'll still be here until I go through a loading screen. But it'll tell me who I have selected waiting on standby for the next quest. See, so yeah, I can choose Greg. And now it's telling me Casper's heading back to Stables. And now Greg is in quest preparations for the next time we go out on a mission. Or if I just walk outside, Greg will appear. Uh, change Siege Monsties. These are specifically to go help you fight Sakajiva. They will appear in the Siege, of course, and then if you have the mod that turns Safi into a quest for, for one to four players, they'll appear there too. As long as Safi is in his normal arena, the Monsties will appear there. And I can just pick whoever I want. Oh yeah, by the way, whenever you change their, nick their names, it'll appear their nicknames here in the list. This will be fixed so that you can change it in the config file, I believe, next update. Um, but this is the default setting if you don't like this, if you want it to always be their species name. The config file will be working, I believe, next patch. So that it'll say, you know, that'll actually just say Rajang. This will just say Berioth, etc, etc. And, of course, to play with people who do not have the mod, um, I don't want to uninstall the mod every time I want to play with someone who doesn't have it, so I'm just going to click this button. And now, whenever I go out on a mission, the monsties will simply 
It'll be as if the mod does not exist. I think the only feature that remains active whenever you do that is the Kolv, Taroth, and Safi sieges are always active no matter what. But the monsties, which change, you know, obviously it, it adds a creature that is adding desync to your missions, and it also changes the wild monster AI. All of that turns off whenever the monsties are disabled. But the infinite sieges for Kolv and Safi remain. And then same thing for multiplayer. We'll go ahead and turn monsties back on. If I want to play with other people, multiplayer monster behavior, you want to turn that on because this is going to reduce desync between players. It will always be the same monster for everyone. If I post the quest, it will switch everyone who joins my quest. It'll switch their main monster to Toby automatically so you don't have to manually change it. Um, and it also automatically switch their Safi quest, even if we're not going to fight uh, Safi. So you got to make sure if you're playing with other people using different Wansies that whenever you're playing by yourself, you're going to want to set those back to the way that you want them whenever you're playing on your own again. Because um, it will automatically set no matter who you're playing with, whatever their Wansies are, it's going to change your defaults to theirs. And whoever posts the quest, it will also use their levels. Um, and then, of course, when you're by yourself, you can turn that off. Um, technically, you could leave this on all the time, but it is going to simplify their behavior a little bit. Some of their animations will be different. They'll be a little less responsive, but the reason for that is just so that whenever you're playing online with other people, it keeps people from getting disconnected from desync um, if the multiplayer mode is enabled. There'll be some lag and other problems if you don't turn it on, but it won't, you know, break everything. It's just not, you know, not as pleasant of an experience without it. And then of course by yourself you turn it off so that you can have optimum smoothness and performance with your own monster whenever it's just the two of you. And that is all for this. I'm going to go into more detail about things in future videos. There's some things that I want to redo from old content and then of course there's new features and things added to the mod that I want to talk about. And if you want to support Fan Diarist and the mod. Uh, there's a link to like have this donate to him and PayPal in the Discord. And if you have any questions, you can also come to the Discord to get support. Or you can come get skins like this one for your monsties if you want them to look unique from wild monsters. Or if you want some cool skins, you want to change the way the wild monsters look. Um, there is a section in the Discord with all of that if you would like it. Um, but I'm going to keep this brief-ish to mostly the essentials and that's all we're going to talk about today so love you guys see you later hope this was helpful and if you need translated stuff it is in the discord goodbye